Hare Krishna, everybody. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just off the coast of the English Channel. I'm here with <clears throat> Abhaya Das Brahmachari, my loyal assistant, and staying with Radharaman in his flat. Um, making our preparations for our journey up to Hereford on, on Monday. One adventure after another in this material world. But still, every day, we're hearing the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and it's giving us everything. Therefore, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was so attached to this literature. <clears throat> he said this, in due course, Maha Pralaya, devastating floods, will inundate the entire universe. If you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or, if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam, but under no circumstances release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage, because after it is subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya, Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda So, the Ratyatra festival is still in, just, just ending or in the middle of it and the Lord is accepting prasadam in the house of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Text fifth, uh, chapter 15, Madhyalila. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, beginning with text 32. On the day celebrating the conquest of Lanka, a day known as Vijaya Dashami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dressed up all his devotees as monkey soldiers. Text 33. Displaying the emotions of Hanuman, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took up a large tree branch and mounting the walls of the Lanka fort began to dismantle it. In the ecstasy of Hanuman, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu angrily said, Where is that rascal Ravana? He has kidnapped the universal mother, Sita. Now I shall kill him and all his family. Everyone became very much astonished to see the emotional ecstasy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And everyone began to chant, all glories, all glories, again and again. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees participated in all the festivals, including Ra Rasa Yatra, Diwali, and Uttana Dvadashi. The Diwali fe festival takes place on the dark moon night in the month of Kartik, October, November. The Rasa Yatra, or Rasa dancing of Krishna, takes place on the full moon night of the same month. Uttana Dwarashi takes place the day after Ekadashi, in the waxing fourth night of the moon of the same month. All the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu participated in all these festivals. 37. One day, the two brothers, 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu consulted each other, consulted with each other while sitting together in a solitary place. No one could understand what the brothers discussed between themselves. But later, all the devotees could guess what the subject matter was. Thereafter, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called for all the devotees and asked them to return to Bengal. In this way, he bade farewell to them. Bidding farewell to all the devotees, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested them to return to Jagannath Puri every year to see him and then see the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. Text 41 with great respect, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Advaita Acharya give Krishna consciousness devotion to Krishna, even to the lowest of men, Chandalas. Purport This is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order to all his devotees. Krishna Bhakti, devotion to Krishna, is open to everyone, even low class men like chandalas. One should follow this order in the disciplic succession stemming from Sri Advaita and Nitananda Prabhu and distribute Krishna consciousness without discrimination throughout the world. There are different kinds of men beginning with the Brahmana and going down to the lowest platform known as chandala. Whatever one's position, everyone in this age of Kali needs to be enlightened in Krishna consciousness. That is the greatest need of the day. Everyone is acutely feeling the pangs of material existence. Even in the ranks and files of the American Senate, the pinpricks of material existence are felt, so much so that April 30th, 1974, was actually set aside as prayer day. Thus, everyone is feeling the resultant pinpricks pin pin pricks of Kali Yuga brought about by human societies indulging in illicit sex, meat-eating, gambling, and intoxication. Now is the time for the members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness to distribute Krishna Bhakti all over the world and thus follow the orders of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord has ordered everyone to become a guru. Madhya 7, 128. Amara Agyaya Guru Haya Taridesh. Everyone in every town and village should be enlightened by the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna consciousness should be distributed to everyone indiscriminately. In this way, the entire world will be peaceful and happy and everyone will glorify Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he desires. See how eternal Prabhupada's instructions are. He, this was written in 1975, 74, 75. And here we are, and it's exactly the same situation. And it's still just as urgent, more urgent even. The word Chandala actually refers to a dog-eater who is considered the lowest of, of men, even Chandalas can be enlightened in Krishna consciousness due to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's benedictions. <clears throat> Krishna Bhakti is not the monopoly of a certain caste. Everyone is eligible to receive this great benediction given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Everyone should be given a chance to receive it and be happy. The word dana, meaning charity, is also significant in this verse. Whoever engages in the distribution of Krishna consciousness is a charitable person. Professional men recite Srimad Bhagavatam and discuss Krishna Bhakti for an exchange of money. They cannot distribute such exalted transcendental property to everyone and anyone. Only pure devotees who have no motive other than serving Krishna can give such transcendentally valuable benedictions out of charity. Text 42 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Nityananda Prabhu go to Bengal 
and without restriction manifest devotional service to the Lord, Krishna Consciousness. Purport Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thus ordered Nityananda Prabhu to deliver all the Bengalis to devotional service. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.32, the Lord says, Mam hi partha vyapashritya ye pisyu papa jone yaha striyo vaishas tata shudras tepiyanti padam gatim. O son of Prita, <clears throat> those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, vaishas, merchants, and shudras, workers, can attain the supreme destination. Whoever takes to Krishna consciousness and follows the regulated principles can return home, back to Godhead. In his Anubhashya, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes, There is a class of so-called devotees called Prakrita Sahajas who think that Nityananda Prabhu is an ordinary human being. They have spread the news that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Nityananda Prabhu to return to Bengal from Orissa just to marry and beget children. <clears throat> this is certainly a great offense against Nityananda Prabhu. Such an offense is called Pashanda Buddhi or the atheistic remark. Offen <clears throat> Such an offense is called Pashanda Buddhi or an atheistic remark. Offenders consider Nityananda Prabhu to be like one of them, an ordinary human being. They do not know of Nityananda Prabhu's identity with the Vishnu Tattva. Thinking Nityananda Prabhu to be an ordinary human being is the business of mental speculators known as Kunapatma Vadis. These people accept the material body, which is a bag of three material elements kunape tridatuke, <clears throat> as themselves. <clears throat> they think that Nityananda Prabhu's body was similarly material and that it was meant for sense gratification. Whoever thinks in this way is a candidate for the darkest regions of hell. Those who hanker after women and money, who are self-interested and have the mentality of merchants, can certainly discover many things with their fertile brains and speak against the authorized revealed scriptures. They also engage in the same money-making businesses to cheat innocent people and they try to support their business programs by making such offensive statements. Actually, Nityananda Prabhu, being the expansion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is the most munificent incarnation no one should consider him an ordinary human being or an entity like the Prajapatis who were ordered by Brahma to increase generations. Nityananda Prabhu should not be conclude, considered instrumental for sense gratification. Although professional so-called preachers support this idea, such statements are not found in any authorized revealed scriptures. Actually, there is no support for these statements made by sahajas or other professional distributors of Krishna Bhakti. Text 43 <clears throat> Nityananda Prabhu was given assistance like Ramadas, Gadadhar Das and several others. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I give them to you to assist you. Text 44 <clears throat> I shall also go to see you at intervals, keeping myself invisible. I shall watch you dance. Text 45 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Srivas Pandit and with his arm about his neck began to speak to him in sweet words. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Srivas Thakur Perform congregational chanting daily and be assured that I shall also dance in your presence. You will be able to see this dancing, but not others. 47. Take this prasadam of Lord Jagannath and this cloth and deliver them to my mother, Shachi Devi. 
After offering her obeisances, please request her to excuse my offenses. 48. I have given up the service of my mother and have accepted the sannyas order. Actually, I should not have done this, for by do so doing, I have destroyed my religious principles. Text 49. I am subordinate to the love of my mother, and it is my duty to serve her in return. Instead of doing so, I have accepted the renounced order. Certainly, this is the act of a madman. <laughs> Text 50. How sweet is that? A mother is not offended by her mad son, and knowing this, my mother is not offended by me. 51. I had no business in accepting the renounced order and sacrificing my love for my mother, which is my real property. Actually, I was in a crazy state of mind when I accepted sannyas. 52. I am staying here at Jagannath Puri Nilachala to comply with her orders, but at in intervals I go see her lotus feet. But at intervals I go see her lotus feet. 53. Indeed, I go there daily to see her lotus feet. She is able to feel my presence, although she does not believe it to be true. 54 and 55. One day my mother, Shachi, offered food to Shalagram Vishnu. She offered rice cooked with from uh, shali patties, various kinds of vegetables, spinach, curry made of banana flowers, fried patola, with neem leaves, pieces of gin ginger, with lemon, and also yogurt, milk, sugar candy, and many other foods. Oh. Text 56. Taking the, food upon her, taking the food upon her lap, mother was crying to think that all that food was very dear to her Nimai. My mother was thinking, Nimai is not here. Who will accept all this food? As she meditated upon me in this way, as she meditated upon me in this way, her eyes filled with tears. <clears throat> While she was thus thinking and crying, I immediately went there with great haste and ate everything. Seeing the dish empty, she wiped her tears away. She then began to wonder who had eaten all that food. Why is the plate empty? she wondered doubting that Balagopal had eaten it all. She began to wonder whether there had actually been anything on the plate in the first place. She then, then, she, then again, she thought that some animal might have come and eaten everything. 661. She thought, perhaps by mistake, I did not put any food on the plate. So, th so thinking, she went into the kitchen and saw the pots. When she saw that all the pots were still filled with rice and vegetables, there was some doubt in her mind, and she was astonished. Thus wondering, she called Ishan, the servant, and had the plate, the place cleaned again. She then offered another plate to Gopal. Now, whenever she pair, prepares some good cooked food, and wants to feed it to me, she cries in great ecstasy, in great anxiety. Now, whenever she prepares some good cooked food and wants to feed it to me, she cries in great anxiety. Text 65 Being obliged by her love, I am brought there to eat. Mother knows all these things internally and feels happiness, but externally she does not accept them. 66. Such an incident took place on the last Vijaya Dashami day. You can ask her about this incident and thus make her believe that I actually go there. While describing all this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became a little overwhelmed. But just to finish bidding farewell to the devotees, he remained patient. 68. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu next spoke some relishable words to Raghava Pandit. 
He said, I am obliged to you, to you due to your pure love for me. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then informed everyone, just hear about the pure devotional service rendered to Krishna by Raghava Pandit. Indeed, Raghava Pandit's service is supremely pure and highly accomplished. Text 70 <clears throat> Apart from other commodities, just hear about his offering of coconuts. A coconut is sold at the rate of five gandhas each. Although he, has, although he already has hundreds of trees and millions of fruits, he, still, he is still very eager to hear about the place where sweet coconuts are available. He collects coconuts with great endeavor from a place 20 miles away and he pays four panas for each of them. Each day, five to seven coconuts are clipped and put into water to keep cool. At the time of offering boga, the coconuts are again clipped and clean, cleansed. After holes are made in them at the top, they are offered to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna drinks the juice from these coconuts and sometimes the coconuts are left drained of juice. At other times the coconuts remain filled with juice. When Raghava Pandit sees that the juice has been drunk from the coconuts, he is very pleased. He then breaks the coconuts, takes out the pulp and puts it on another plate. After offering the pulp, he meditates outside the temple door. In the meantime, Lord Krishna, having eaten the pulp, leaves the plate empty. Sometimes after eating the pulp, Krishna fills the plate again with new pulp. In this way, the faith of Raghava Pandit increases and he floats in an ocean of love. Text 79 One day, it so happened that about ten coconuts were properly clipped and brought by a servant to offer to the deity. When the coconuts were brought, there was little time to offer them because it was all already late. The servant, holding the container of coconuts, remained standing at the door. Raghava Pandit then saw that the servant touched the ceiling above the door and then touched the coconuts with the same hand. Raghava Pandit then said, People are always coming and going through that door. The dust from their feet blows up and touches the ceiling. After touching the ceiling above the door, you have touched the coconuts. Now they are no longer fit to be offered to Krishna because they are contaminated. Purport Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur states that Raghava Pandit was not simply a crazy fellow suffering from some cleansing mania. He did not belong to the mundane world. In lower consciousness, accepting something to be spiritual when it is actually material is called Mauma Ijadi. Raghava Pandit was an eternal servant of Krishna and everything he saw was related to the service of the Lord. He was always absorbed in the transcendental thought of how he could always serve Krishna with everything. Sometimes neophytes, devotees on the lower platforms, tried to imitate Raghava Pandit on the platform of material purity and impurity. Such imitation will not help anyone. As explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anchalila 4174, Badra Badra Vastu Jnana Nahika Prakriti. On the transcendental platform, there is no higher or lower, pure or impure. On the material platform, distinction is made between good and bad. But on the spiritual platform, everything is of the same quality. Dvaite Badra Badra Jnana Sabha Manodharma E Bala E Manda E Sabha Brahma In the material world, conceptions of good and bad are all mental speculations. Therefore, saying this is good and that is bad is all a mistake. 
CC Ajja 4, 176. Text 84. <clears throat> Such is the service of Raghava Pandit. He did not accept the coconuts, but threw them over the wall. His service is purely based on unalloyed love, and it conquers the whole world. <clears throat> Text 85. Thereafter, Raghava Pandit had other coconuts gathered, cleansed, and clipped, and with great attention he offered them to the deity to eat. Text 86. In this way, from distant villages, he collects excellent bananas, mangoes, oranges, jackfruits, and whatever other first-class fruits he has heard about. 87. All these fruits are collected from distant places and brought and bought at a high price. After, tringing, after trimming them with great care and purity, Raghava Pandit offers them to the deity. Thus, with great care and attention, Raghava Pandit prepares spinach, other vegetables, radishes, fruits, chipped rice, powdered rice, and sweetmeats. Text 89. He prepares cakes, sweet rice, condensed milk, and everything else with great attention, and the cooking conditions are purified <clears throat> so that the food is first class and delicious. Text 90. Raghava Pandit also offers all kinds of pickles, such as kashamdi, kashamdi. He offers various scents, garments, ornaments, and the best of everything. 91. Thus Raghava Pandit serves the Lord in an incomparable way. Everyone is very much satisfied just to see Him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then mercifully embraced Raghava Pandit. The Lord also offered all the other devotees a farewell with similar respect. The Lord also respectfully told Sivananda Sain, Take care of Vasudev Dutta very nicely. Vasudev Dutta is very liberal. Every day, whatever income he receives, he spends. He does not keep any balance. Being a householder, Vasudev Dutta needs to save some money. Because he is not doing so, it is very difficult for him to maintain his family. Please take care of Vasudev Dutta's family affairs. Become his manager and make the proper adjustments. Purport. Vasudev Dutta and Shivananda Sain were living in the same neighborhood, which is presently called Kumara Hatta or Hali Sahara. Text 97. Come every year and bring all my devotees with you. Come every year and bring all my devotees with you to the Gundicha festival. I also request you to maintain all of them. Text 98 The Lord then with great respect extended an invitation to all the inhabitants of Kulinagram, asking them to come every year and bring silk and rope to carry Lord Jagannath during the Ratha Yatra festival. Text 99 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, Gunaraj Khan of Kulinagram compiled a book named Sri Krishna Vijay in which there is a sentence revealing the author's ecstatic love of Krishna. Purport <clears throat> Sri Krishna Vijay is a book of poems considered to be the first poetry book written in Bengal. Hmm. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur states that this book was begun in the year 1395 Shakabda, A.D. 1473. After seven years, it was completed in 1407 Shakabda. This book was written in plain language 
and even half-educated Bengalis and women could read it very clearly. Even ordinary men with little knowledge of the alphabet could read this book and understand it. Its language, its language is not very ornamental and sometimes the poetry is not very sweet to hear although according to the sonnet style each light each line should con although according to the sonnet style each line should contain 14 syllables there are sometimes 16 12 or 13 syllables in, in in his verse many words used in those days could be understood only by local inhabitants yet this book is still so popular that no bookstore is complete without it. It is very valuable for those who are interested in advancing in Krishna consciousness. Sri Gunaraj, Sri Gunaraj Khan was one of the topmost Vaishnavas and he translated the 10th and 11th cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam for the understanding of the common man. The book Sri Krishna Vijay was highly praised by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it is very valuable for all Vaishnavas. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives a genealogical table and family history of Gunaraj Khan. When a Bengali emperor named Adi Shura first came from Kanyakubja or Kan Kanauj, <clears throat> he brought with him five, five Brahmanas and five Kayastas. Since the king is supposed to be accompanied by his associates, the brahmanas accompanied the king to help him in higher spiritual matters. The kayastas were to render other services. In the northern Indian, in the northern Indian high country, the kayastas are accepted as shudras, but in Bengal, the kayastas are considered among the higher castes. It is a fact that the kayastas came to Bengal from northern India, specifically from Kanyakubja or Kanauj. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that the Kayastas who came from Kanyakubja were the were high class men <clears throat> were high class men. Of them, Dasharath Vasu was a great personality, and the thirteenth generation of his family included Gunaraj Khan. His real name was Maladara Basu, but the title Khan was given to him by the Emperor of Bengal. Thus he became known as Gunaraj Khan. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives the following genealogical table of Gunaraj Khan. 1. Dasharath Vasu 2. Kushala 3. Subhashankar 4. Hangsa 5. Shaktiram Bhaganan Baganda uh, Shaktiram Baganda Muktiram Mainagara and Alankara Bangaja 6. Damodar 7. Anantaram 8. Guniyak, uh, Guniyayaka Guniyaya, Guninayaka and Vinayaka. The twelfth generation included Bhagiratta and the thirteenth Maladara Vasu or Gunaraj Khan. Sri Gunaraj Khan had fourteen sons, of whom the second son, Lakshmi Mata Vasu, re received the title Satyaraj Khan. His son was Sri Ramananda Vasu. Therefore, Ramananda Vasu belonged to the 15th generation. Gunaraj Khan was a very well-known and wealthy man. His palace, fort and temples are still existing and from these we can deduce that the opulence of Gunaraj Khan was certainly very great. Sri Gunaraj Khan never cared for the artificial aristocracy introduced by Balal Sain. Text 100 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj is my life and soul 
By this statement, I am sold into the hands of the descendants of Gunaraj Khan. Purport <clears throat> The full verse referred, referred to here is Ekabhavi Vanda Hari Yodakari Hata Nandanandana Krishna Mora Prana Nata With folded hands I offer my prayers <clears throat> unto Krishna Nanda Maharaja's son <clears throat> who is my life and soul. Text 101 To say nothing of you, even a dog living in your village is very dear to me. What then to speak of others? Text 102 After this, Ramananda Basu and Satyaraj Khan both submitted questions at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> Satyaraj Khan said, My dear Lord, being a householder and a materialistic man, I do not know the process of advancing in spiritual life. I therefore submit myself unto your lotus feet and request you to give me orders. Text 104 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Without cessation, continue chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. Whenever possible, serve him and his devotees, the Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna. Text 105 Upon hearing this, Satyaraj Khan said, How can I recognize a Vaishnava? Please let me know what a Vaishnava is. What are his common symptoms? Text 106 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied Whoever chants the holy name of Krishna just once is worshipable and is the topmost human being. Purport Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that a person who simply chants the holy name of Krishna one, once becomes perfect and should be regarded as a Vaishnava. This is confirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami. It is Upadashamrita 5. Krishna Tiyasya Giritam Manasa Driyeta. With such faith in the holy name, one may begin a life of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> but an ordinary person cannot chant the holy name of Krishna with such faith. One should accept the holy name of Krishna to be identical with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Transcendence, Himself. As the Padma Purana states, the holy name of Krishna is identical with Krishna and is like a Chintamani gem, a touchstone. That name is, that name is Krishna personified in sound and is therefore perfectly transcendental and eternally liberated of material contamination. Thus one should understand that the name Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. Having such faith, <clears throat> one must continue to chant the holy name. When one is situated on the neophyte platform, one cannot understand the devotional ingredients of a pure unalloyed devotee. However, when the novice engages in devotional service, especially in deity worship, and follows the order of a bona fide spiritual master, he is a pure devotee. Anyone can take advantage of hearing about Krishna consciousness from such a devotee and thus gradually become purified. In other words, any devotee who believes that the holy name of the Lord is identical with the Lord is a pure devotee. Even though he may be in the neophyte stage, Shall I read that again? Is this important or what? It, I thought so. Anyone can take advantage of hearing about Krishna consciousness from such a devotee and thus gradually become purified. In other words, any devotee who believes that the holy name of the Lord 
is identical with the Lord is a pure devotee, even though he may be in the neophyte stage. By his association, others may also become Vaishnavas. One is known as a materialistic devotee if he simply worships the deity of Hari with faith, but does not show proper respect <clears throat> to the devotees and to others. We'll read that again. One is known as a materialistic devotee if he simply worships the deity of Hari with faith, but does not prop show proper respect to the devotees and to others. This is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.247 Archaryam eva haraye pujam yak shadiya hete natad bhakteshu chanyeshu sabhakta prakrita smritaha Yet even by associating with such a neophyte devotee, one can become a devotee also. When Lord Chaitanya was teaching Sanatan Goswami, he said, Shadhavan Janahoya Bhakti Adhikari Uttama Madhyama Kanishta Shraddha Anusari Yahara Komala Shraddha Ye Kanishta Jana Krami Krami Hino Bhakta Haibe Uttama Rati Prema Taratamye Bhakti Taratama A person who has attained firm faith is a real candidate for advancing in Krishna consciousness. According to the faith, there are first class, second class, and neophyte devotees. One who has preliminary faith is called a Kanishta Adhikari, or a neophyte. The neophyte, however, however, can become an advanced devotee if he strictly follows the regulative principles set down by the spiritual master. Therefore, it is on, it is on the basis of faith and attachment to Krishna that one can judge who is a Madhyamadhikari or an Uttama Adhikari. CC Madhya 222, 64, 69, and 71. It is thus concluded that even a neophyte devotee is superior to the karmis and jnanis because he has full faith in chanting the holy name of the Lord. A karmi or a jnani, regardless of his greatness, has no faith in Lord Vishnu, his holy name, or his devotional service. One may be advanced religiously, but if he is not trained in devotional service, he has very little credit on the transcendental platform. Even a neophyte devotee engaged in deity worship in accordance with the regulation set forth by the spiritual master is in a position superior to that of the fruitive worker and speculative philosopher. Mm. Even a neophyte devotee engaged in deity worship in accordance with the regulations set forth by the spiritual master is in a superior position to that of the fruitive worker and speculative philosopher. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Such purports, pregnant with relevant instructions about how to be a devotee, how to see other devotees, and therefore how to be a pure devotee of the Lord, from a neophyte to an advanced devotee. So I'm going to stop here uh, tonight, it's 8 o'clock. UK time <clears throat> and ask the devotees if they have reflections or if anything's stuck out in their minds during the reading tonight. These are such nectarian readings, especially when the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibits his, displays his love for his devotees and glorifies them in various ways. It is the Summa bonum of everything. It is everything. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Okay. Mm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. First, <coughs> First is a comment from Brian Phillips. Haribo Bhakta Brian. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari says, Jai Guru Maharaj. She's saying Jai Guru Maharaj every day, the same. She's so steady, fixed. Rai Kanu, Devi Dasi. Mm. Says Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Jai Rai Khan, the new resident of London. And, uh, from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Says Jai Maharaj, Hare Krishna, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai. From Andrew Dimal. Andrew Dimal. Andrew. Andrew Dimal. Andrew Dimal. Hare Krishna. Please accept my respectful obeisances. Jai Haribo. Krishna Premavati says, Hare Krishna, all devotees, Dandvat Pranams Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And a few comments from Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi. Okay, Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi, go ahead. She says, Give us some reflections. First is about the prayer day. She says, Is there still a world prayer day? Is 30th of April still prayer day in the USA? You know, I don't know. I don't see it on the calendar that I use. But that not that bit not mean anything. I just use a certain calendar program. I'm not sure. And she comments that Nityananda Prabhu was an avidut. Oh yes. Standard of cleanliness in deity worship learned from the coconut and sealing incident. Ah yes. Raghava Pandit. And she also writes that Sri Krishna Vijaya is translated in English. Hmm. The victory. The victory of Sri Krishna. The victorious Sri Krishna. And there's uh, from Noel Craver. Noel Craver, Hare Krishna, Hare Bull. Says Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for your service. It is nice to know that Sri Krishna Vijay was the first book of poetry written in Bengal. Mm. It was written by Gunaraj Khan. Was this a text that was translated by Sri the Prabhupada? Would that be Krishna the Supreme? Is this book still prescribed as reading by Vaishnavas? Well, it's still popular among the villagers uh, in Bengal. And uh, Prabhupada did translate a, a good, what is that, what was that called? Gita Gan or something like that. And uh, also, it, it became very popular. Now it's very popular in the villages. But this particular v poetry book, as it says in the purport, was very special because it was written in very simple language with a very simple vocabulary. And not, it was rough, it wasn't polished and refined poetry. But it was, it's very popular still with the Bengali villagers. I mean, I don't know about right now, I haven't been in Bengal very much for a very long time, so I, wouldn't, I couldn't give an authoritative answer about that, you know, about how popular it is today. But at, at the time of this pastime, it was for sure. And uh, the time of the purport was written also, it was was for sure. So that was, you know, 40, 45 years ago. 
it was. But I think that in India, especially, Srila Prabhupada's books are becoming more and more popular. Judging from the number of books that have gone out in India, which is a lot, they've been leading in the world for quite some time. But like I said, I, I haven't spent a lot of time there in the recent years, so I can't I can't say for sure. Surely the temples are expanding very rapidly and uh, yeah. It, it's stature, the stature of Iskon has grown to the point where regularly the Prime Minister will come and you know make to give some speeches, popular speeches and favorable speeches. Actually, uh, on the year of the 500th anniversary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this was um, 1986, January, or, well, it was actually December 31st, the, 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 uh, the midnight before uh, 1986, started, Indira Gandhi, who was the Prime Minister at the time of India, she offered a midnight arati just at the beginning of the 500th year of anniversary and dedicated to the Lord Chaitanya and national TV. So it's no wonder that when things like that can happen in a country of that size, why it's gotten the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and all of the eternal associates of Lord Chaitanya and the, their, their followers, and why it's so ripe a field for spreading Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. From Sudevi Dasi. Jai Sudevi Dasi. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Bowl. Please accept my humble obeisances, glories to Srila Prabhupada. I am still here, hearing and relishing. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for being there every day and reminding us of what a staunch devotee is. And then from Rati Manjari. Haribo Rati. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, Please accept my respectful obeisances. Yes, Jai Guru Maharaj is my classic opening because I feel that you are victorious day after day by <laughs> reading Srila Prabhupada's books to us. So hard, this is so hard to always hear these things by yourself. So hard. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you. From Vrajaloka, Devi Dasi. Yes, Vrajaloka. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Today we heard some very sweet story, again, on how Lord Chaitanya loves his devotees. Mm. Hearing of these pastimes just melts my heart and helps me to understand what real love means. Yes. Thank you very much for sharing these sweet and elevating pastimes with us every day. I have deep faith that if I hear all these beautiful stories, from your mouth day by day, my heart will be changed and I will learn to love the devotees. <laughs> your servant, Vrajaloka Devi Dasi. I think you already do. That's my humble opinion. <laughs> All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his pastimes. All glories to your service. <laughs> Thank you, Hare Krishna. Something more from Rati Manjari. Go ahead, go rock and roll. Roddy, roll on. <laughs> so what I really like to hear tonight is that there are many materialistic persons who read the Bhagavatam for money, but only the pure devotees whose only motive is to serve Krishna are able to distribute the greatly valuable jewels of Krishna consciousness yes. free of charge. Yes. 
And who hasn't experienced when they go out and distribute books, anyone who's gone out and distribute books for any length of time, seriously, they realize that you can't actually do it <laughs> unless you're in Krishna consciousness. Unless your sadhana is very strong and you're feeling strong in Krishna consciousness. When you get out there among the people the way they are today, it's difficult. But if you're Krishna conscious, it is magic. And then, then you can do it. There was one time, and I, I might have said this recently, I don't remember if I said it, on, said it online, but when Prabhupada came to Atlanta in 1975, yeah, he went to Atlanta, then he went up to Chicago for Rath Yatra, and I was in Tampa, Florida, you know, uh, finish, finishing one of the Radhanamadar buses. I was overseeing the home office and overseeing the refurbishment of the last buses and uh, the, 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 all the Sankirtan devotees from the Radhadharma party came to uh, Atlanta to see Prabhupada and during w the main darshan uh, one of the temple authorities you know, m remarked to Prabhupada that he was worried that the devotees were falling down uh, while distributing his books and he was troubled about that. He was asking Prabhupada about it. And Prabhupada just immediately said, they're not falling down from distributing my books, by, by distributing my books. They're falling down when they stop distributing my books. <laughs> and the whole room just roared in approval. And, you know, and the, the, the temple devotee was kind of like, you know, humbled and kind of had to sit down and <laughs> stop speaking. <laughs> it was wonderful. How Prabhupada gave us mercy and gave us strength and faith, you know, it, it was incredible. Still is. Every time we read his books, we, 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 me and, me and uh, Abai, after the readings, we sit here and look at each other smiling and we just relish how different our consciousness you know, is when we stop reading from when we started. It's amazing. It's amazing, the association of Srila Prabhupada and the direct association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his eternal associates. It's just amazing. It, it is the solution to all the problems of life. And right now, there's so many problems. People can't even count them all. They can't even keep track of them. There's so many problems. Overwhelming. The world is becoming overwhelmed with problems. But the holy name of Krishna and the, these holy you know, scriptures that Prabhupada translated and commented upon, they're the panacea. They can actually help relieve the uh, anxieties of the whole world. Therefore, in that one section, Srila Prabhupada said, this is the duty of the Krishna consciousness movement to distribute to, to relish the hearing and chanting of the holy names and pastimes of Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and, and distribute them and relish in them. This is our gift to the world. Haribo. We dedicate our lives to this, then we're going back to Godhead without a shadow of a doubt. And when you know that, you become free from anxiety no matter what state you're in. From Saloni, Hare Krishna. Saloni Sachi Sundari. Saloni Sachi Sundari. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your divine service. All glories to the sublime souls listening to the nectar of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hey, that's a nice one. She's getting that down. Asking, what is the difference between Antyalila and Madhyalila Chaitanya Charitamrita? Well, the Madhyalila is the middle pastimes and the Antyalila are the end pastimes. I mean, sometimes some devotees categorize them differently, but we accept the categorization by uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. There may be slight differences like this. Some people may take, you know, 
the pastimes after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas as part of the, you know, end pastimes. But that's just a detail. It's not important. Mainly the Majalila pastimes are the uh, pastimes of Lord Chaitanya preaching and the devotees coming back and forth from Jagannath Puri and his uh, relationships with him and all of that and his, and his traveling in, around India and traveling to Vrindavan and back. And then after that, he settles down with his devotees and just relishes transcendental ecstasy. Those are the basic divisions. And then Anchalili is the last 16 years, or last 12 years, excuse me, the last 12 years. For 24 years, he stays in, in Navadweep and, and lives with the Hasta family and then Grihasta. Then he takes sannyas. Then he travels for six years. Uh, so that makes uh, 30 years. And he, he left when he was 48. So then the last 18 years, for six of those years, uh, he, he traveled. And then for the last 12 years, he stayed in uh, Jagannath Puri and relished the en ecstasies of Krishna consciousness. And he got more and more uh, absorbed in that ecstasy, as we will hear about soon. <laughs> Hare Krishna. In a general sense, Majalila are the preaching pastimes. And Anjalila are the relishing pastimes. Uh, Noah Craver says, thank you. Yes, I appreciated that it was written more simply. Interesting, it is popular again now. Yeah. Many things that are basic are timeless. Yes. And as Prabhupada said, simple is best. Krishna Premavati comments, she says, I saw Sri Krishna Vijay advertised by B. Elf Services. Could not see who it is translated by. Mm -hmm. Appreciation from Rati Manjari. Says, I also love to hear that Lord Chaitanya instructed Sri Advaita Acharya to distribute Krishna Bhakti to everyone, even the Chandalas. Mm. Surely he created our good fortune to be able to receive this amazing knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why Prabhupada stressed so much in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita that we should chant the whole Panchatapu Mantra before we chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Because if we understand the intricacies of these five personalities and who they re how they represent the various moods of devotional service and how they illustrate clearly the varieties that are there in the spiritual world and contradict you know, the Mayavad conception that the spiritual world is just one, there are no varieties. So, yes, all glories to Advaita Jarya. But if one worships one of them without the others, like there's many sects that come from the followers of those personalities who give up their full faith in Lord Chaitanya. Because you notice that Lord Chaitanya, that Advaita Charya, Nityananda, Gadadhar Pandit, and Srivast, they were all completely dedicated to Lord Chaitanya. He was the center of all of them. And he would worship them, of course, but in the whole, you know, he was the center of everyone. So those followers of Advaita Charya who are in a, the different Apasapradayas and Nityananda followers and family members who were in the, the, the Nityananda Nagaris and Goranga Nagaris and Nityananda Vangsas and people like that, they have faith in one but don't have faith in the other. You know, when Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami 
was ordered by Lord Nityananda to go to Vrindavan and then he got the order to compile Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was a dis disagreement, remember in the beginning of the book, between his his brother and uh, one of the one of the devotees of Lord Chaitanya that did not give proper respect to Minigatam Ramdas, who was a great devotee of Lord Nityananda, and he considered this offensive. He said, you can't worship one and not the other. He said, this is offense. Then Lord Nityananda was so pre pleased with him that he uh, came to him in a dream that night and told him to go to Vrindavan, get away from this atmosphere, and, every, and he would attain all things, which he did. And he compiled Chaitanya Charitamrita and Govinda Lilamrita to most elevated lit scriptures. Hare Krishna. Another comment from Krishna Premavati. She says, I hope that in the near future, millions and millions will discover the nectar of reading together and relishing Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Haribo, so be it. So be it. And we're hoping that once this audiobook of, of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, we're, ho we're, we're working hard to get this book out by and release it by Gorpurnim this next year, 2021. That will be a big event. The next big thing. And from Vrindavaneshwari Devi Dasi. Vrindavaneshwari Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. This sweet reading reminded me of something. I thought I'd share this that I recently became aware of. In a celebration of Bhakti Churu Swami's Vyasa Puja in mm. Florida yesterday, mm. devotees were able to partake in prasadam that Bhakti Churu prepared before departing this material world. Wow. He had prepared a pesto sauce, and this was used to prepare a pasta for his Vyasa Puja. Wow. Hearing this brought tears to my eyes. Even though not here in his physical presence, devotees are still fortunate to feel his love and devotion by having this Maha Prasadam by a loving, pure soul. Yes, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Vrindavaneshwari. Thank you, that's wonderful. This is real spiritual life. This is life. Everything else is death. No craver comments. Also, Maharaj, it is amazing how our consciousness changes after we hear these transcendental texts. So cleansing for our minds and hearts. Yes, I was just saying how Abai and I, every night when we're finished, we look at each other, big grins, and just whatever it was that happened during the day and whatever things we have to deal with when getting things together and doing things in the material world, it all becomes more than worth it, you know, when we hear the Chaitanya Church and read together. It's nectar, pure nectar. For sure. Saloni Sachi Sundari and Krishna Premavati say thank you, Maharaj. Thanks to, thanks to you. <coughs> and one more from Rati Manjari. Says, I also really loved to hear how Lord Chaitanya knows everything all his devotees go through, even though he doesn't always show himself to them. Mm. Just like the amazing story of how he visits Mother Sachi daily and eats her food, and now she feels them but does not see, does not see him externally. The more I hear about Lord Chaitanya, the more I am convinced that Lord Chaitanya really is all about relishing love. Yes. How wonderful. Yes. Yes, we can't go to Radha and Krishna except through Lord Chaitanya. 
you try to go and understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna without going through the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's not possible in this age to do it properly. That is the greatest gift for Chaitanya. It's given the greatest gifts. I relish the part towards the end where uh, it's described that the holy name is not different than Krishna and to come to that platform of faith uh, fixes oneself, fixes one up in pure devotional service. If we just think it, if we just have faith that that's true, even if we don't fully realize it, then we become a pure devotee. Even if we just theoretically understand it and accept it as true, immediately puts us on another platform of devotional service. And then, of course, from there, when Rupa Goswami glorifies the holy name in his Namashtaka, he says that when the Lord manifests himself, when the holy name manifests himself in the heart, then all the karma that one has accrued, even the prarabdha karma, uh, it disappears. Then one can relish truly relish okay I thank you all so much for your Are there a couple more is that okay Krishna Premavati says Jai Maharaj Hari Hari Bo Anandam Bodhivardhanam Pratipadam Purnamita Swadhanam Shikshastakam one and from Krishna Kata Haribo Krishna. He says, Hare Krishna Gurudev, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. It's awesome to see all the nice comments lately. All glories to the assembled devotees. Had to look up National uh, National Day of Prayer. It's held on the first Thursday of May. People are asked to, quote, turn to God in prayer and meditation. There you go. Unquote. The president is required by law to sign a proclamation each year encouraging all Americans to pray on this day. <laughs> I wonder if the president still does it. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very interesting. It is also very interesting that it was signed into law during Srila Prabhupada's presence and as the movement was spreading like anything in America. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Okay, let us continue uh, to advance in devotional service so that once the world goes through this pandemic and comes out the other side with, with the new normal, let us make the new normal uh, the chanting and reading of Srila Prabhupada's books and the Holy Name in every town and village. Let us dedicate our activities and even our thoughts and our prayers. Let's make that our prayer day. Pray for the day that everyone in the world can join in the kirtan of Radha and Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai Samabeda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo See you tomorrow night, same place, same time, same subject and we'll continue to churn this ocean of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and bathe in that nectar and be happy. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.